welcome everybody to the fifth episode of New Waylai, where we start working on the second level to our big elevated plaza here in front of our train station. Last time we left off with pretty much the whole layout of the first level done. It's been a long time with this park though, and I really want to move on to the next part of the city. So this episode will be a bit long so we can see this park completely finished. What I'm doing now is just trying to finish up the detailing. I added a couple more plants and the biggest thing was just adding all of these bushes. Now I wasn't going to cover up the planters completely, but I did want to have some sort of pattern with the bushes and that's what I'm doing here, especially this, the main area right here, the main gathering area with these bushes. I haven't done it, but I am considering coming back to that and replacing those with uh, workshop bushes. But for now, we'll, we'll just keep it there. I did put a light or two in the last episode, but I realized that I don't think they were working actually because it might have been from the old lighting pack, but then someone came around and removed the dependency that that thing needed. And this is called Modern Lighting Pack uh, Liberated. So and it's really nice to just have these things turn on immediately as you're placing them. But because they do, I just had to do that in the nighttime because it just looks awesome. So then after finishing any final adjustments, it was time to actually get to work on that second level of the plaza. And how would I do that? I keep saying plaza, but it turned out to be really more of a park. At this time, it, I had no idea and this is only one section of it anyway. So I keep saying plaza, but I think we'll call this a park. Anyway, so I, I used again, third time, using this roof, these roof networks. And notice how something funky is happening here. Look at this. Yeah, you can curve them, but they're not really curving. Now, the negative part to that is that, as you might have seen, they get really narrow if you curve them too much. But for the most part, the, the effect of curving is that the node, where the node would be, isn't a 90 degree cut. If you curve it, then that angle changes. So it does allow you to make any polygon, well, sometimes it gets tricky. And in fact, I'll, and, and many streams later, I actually came back to this and had to do some slight readjustments. Um, but at least you, you're not very limited. You, you are able to make some polygons as I did here, as long as you uh, curve the segment enough to get the nodes to line up properly. It is a little tricky though, because you pretty much only have like a couple pixels of of movement that you're like a buffer I guess uh, to make it fit otherwise you're gonna see an obvious crack now here's another funky thing it's the glass surfaces it's probably from the poppable surface pack and I was trying to figure out what I can do with it like uh, you know can I make a column or row thicker than the other one or something but no I can't because the surface itself has some of these lines drawn on it so it's like it's like you have the top view drawn, but then the nodes are moving, I guess, a, a model that's underneath it or something. It's kind of weird. So you're actually very limited on how you can distort these. But luckily I found out that it's not too bad because, you know, this whole area has some funky geometry anyway. Especially as it's tapering like this. I came out with a shape that I thought looked pretty good. You know, it's a nice... Uh, this, this side of the whole Park Plaza thing is particularly angular anyway, particularly... Uh, uh, yeah, angular is the right word, I guess. Lines and corners, sharp corners and stuff. So, so that was fine. But then speaking of uh, sharps and sharp corners and all that, I decided to do the opposite for a floor to the entrance. I, I don't know where this idea came from, but I decided to have a round kind of hill, just a curved sort of uh, floor. Friend. So I took the tunnel, the, you know, one of these Ronix's train tunnel entrances, and spent a good bit of time here just trying to get this lined up. The biggest issue is because of the height of the curve means that uh, when it didn't seem to line up, I wasn't sure if it was just because of the height, like a shadow or something, or if it really was because there was a gap between it and uh, the network, the, the roof network. But I got it done and then just had to adjust the height so that when I give this platform some thickness, this doesn't poke through the bottom. I was left with this hole toward the front because, again, weird shape, weird geometry. So I put the surface here, not so much to fill it up, although I may have thought I might have thought that at first, but mainly it's just to make sure it's covered no matter what, uh, just to make sure I have no gaps. But what I was really going to do was it was to extend the concrete tunnel into that area. First, I tried to just adjust the nodes this way so that you have this fan kind of uh, shape as you can kind of see here I think I get a little bit better in a few seconds 
But overall, I decided it just wasn't looking too good. Partly was because, again, the nodes don't really distort the shape very well in a way that you that was very intuitive or as you would like. Uh, but I think it also just did feel forced, kind of too obvious. So I decided to go to this, which looks like the lazy option of keeping all of the lines straight and parallel, except for that last one that's necessary to stretch out to the corner. But in the end, I just thought it looked better. And you know what? This is all about like, aesthetics. So if it looks better, that's going to be more important than whether it looks lazy from an engineering perspective. Now I went to adding some thickness to this and I decided to use some curb pieces. Uh, I was trying to see if I could do it this way, like just putting it under by the side. No, like let me just put it on the side, kind of eyeball the shape, just kind of get the thickness that I wanted and the depth that I wanted. So I guess I should say width and height here. And once I got it, it's just a simple copy and paste. Or so I thought until I realized here that things aren't lining up properly. So I had to go back and uh, and uh, rotate them to get them perfectly lined up. But then that was it. Then it's just a tedious effort of going all around and pacing these there. So I cut the rest of that out. And to get to the next step, which was adding some railings now. And these are actually the first... How should I say this? I should... It's the first kind of railing system that's going down... Because so far I haven't used any, I don't think. And there won't be many because I probably got this idea kind of from Star Wars, but my city is going to be very low in railings because the safety systems are just going to be much different than anything you and I imagine right now or imagine feasible in our current time. So, but, but you know, long story short, railings will not be a necessity. So any railings you do see are decorative and that's what's happening here. Now, luckily, uh, I could f I found that to make these things fit properly, I could edit just the the design that's in the middle of the the handrail and the bottom rail. So I could I could kind of just pull those out or in to get these things to fit properly. But the rating is only going in the inside. See, it's only going around the hole in the platform, but it's actually not going around the exterior, the outer circumference of the path. Once that was done, it was time to finish the entrance, and I decided to add an arch there for that. Just kind of add a little bit more to this uh, this clash of shapes here, the entrance being the uh, very curved focused. So I used the Clara arch, which defaults to this color, I guess like a yellow or something when you turn into a procedural object. Uh, I just had to get that to be the right shape, the right height, and then I was done. Done, done, done in the sense of the layout again. Overall shape is done. As I looked over this shape, though, I realized that, you know, it would be better if I put a floor here and that would follow the shape I traced out with, you know, the middle of these these glass panels. Now, of course, I was aware that by doing this, I'm really shrinking down the walkable area. And uh, already the platform, like the whole base of this park, isn't all that big. And every new thing I'm doing here is basically shrinking all the walkable area. But again, I'm going for what looks cool, so I went for it. Uh, I don't really remember what surface or whatever this is exactly, but this was a really tricky part because, again, there's a texture to it. And you have to, uh, if you're stretching out nodes or whatever, then you got, it's, it takes some work to get those lined up right. And there, I realized it's the outlook toward the train station, the last point at that area. So, hey, put a tree there. Uh, something that we'll work on a little bit more a little bit later. So as I think I said, now it's time for actual detailing of the park. So we started here with uh, I believe a gravel surface and just put some sunflowers in there, a pot, a tree, and just really start working with uh, making that entrance pretty nice. Now to add a path, as I've been doing a lot, I draw it on stable ground where you can see easily how it's going and then drag it into place. So I brought in this flex path because it's basically a plain path, undetailed. It does have thickness to it though, which is nice and you can use it. Um, but I wanted to place that here because you know I wasn't actually gonna have people walk on gravel directly. The gravel is just the sort of the primary surface here, the, the base, the foundation, well not foundation, but you know, the base thing that's here and then I can cover it up with, with the pathway. Now I tend to call this flex paving because I think it says that in the thumbnail and it's definitely a big part of the description, but I think the actual name of the asset is paving path or something like that because as we can see here, it is using my theme pavement texture. 
So that's really cool too. And then it was time to go back here and another thing I want to do is put benches right at the edge. As I said, we have no concern here for railings. Uh, there are strange, incomprehensible technologies here that prevent people from falling. And so, you know, benches right at the edge here are perfectly fine. And it's part of the, uh, part of what's normal, you know, whenever you have elevated area of a park or plaza or something. Now, I consider that the glass would still be walkable. It would still be a surface to go on, but I really like the look of this central walkway being elevated, you know, or I should say raised from the surface of the glass. So because of that, I figured we should have some sort of walkway or ramp up from the main path around this onto it. I was playing around with quite a few assets to see what worked. Uh, I just deleted one right there, as you saw there, trying to see what worked. And eventually I settled on, it's some sort of beam, concrete beam, I'm not too sure which asset exactly. Uh, but it's mostly square, but it's actually kind of maybe hexagonal or whatever. So I like the look of it, so I put it in here, but I did have to use, I don't think I used procedure objects on it, so I don't think it maybe couldn't be converted. That's really the only, the only explanation I have for why I copied them a couple of times and then stacked them, well, not on top of each other, but sideways uh, to make it thicker. Then, liven this up. Finally, get more plants in here. Yeah, we just put some sunflowers and trees below, and okay, the whole park has plants and stuff. But no, something not livelier. Colors, the colors. So we got flowers in here, yay. This is the first time I tried to fill up a planter with flowers. So it took me quite a long time. I cut this down a lot trying to figure out what looked good. But eventually I got this little pattern worked out, and I still even had to use some other plants that are actually props. That made things a little tricky when I had to uh, well, not so much the highlighting all that, which is what I'm doing now, but when it came to selecting and rotating stuff, because uh, they just, you know, most of the flowers count as trees, so they behave differently, they're, they're props. Uh, oh yeah, mainly is that the trees rotate, because I have the rotation mod, they rotate as you move the cursor to a different spot, but props, you can rotate in place. So, you know, both rotational behaviors have their advantages and disadvantages, but sadly, they're, um, you know, they're, each option only applies to one thing, whether it's a prop or a tree, right? So trees rotate depending where, where they are. Props, you rotate them yourself. Actually, that was a big reason why I spent a lot of time on the sunflower, which I also cut out because I was trying to get the sunflowers facing, you know, outwards, facing, or should I say, toward the person approaching the elevator doors and I could not get it because the uh, the place I was placing it into would put the sunflower facing a different direction. So I had to just settle with it not being perfectly lined up with the other sunflower. Now I kept talking about that because this really isn't much to explain here. As you see, I decided to expand the planters a little bit um, because, you know, just having the perfectly straight planners didn't really fit with the geometry that we're that we're doing here so we really need to accentuate that or at least respect the shape of the surface by making the planners also have these um, angles to them so but at least the flower parts was very easy to do because it's just a copy and paste now a lot of what comes next is pretty easy to understand from the stream so I'm just gonna take this opportunity to talk a little bit about this whole area and what's what comes next. So as I kind of said before, I realized that this park actually ended up being pretty small, you know, and especially up here, you can look at these benches, it's a pretty small area. So I, I definitely want to make sure that we have a complete park and plaza complex in front of the station because otherwise it just doesn't make sense to have such a tiny area for such a huge train station. But to be honest, I was kind of tired of working so much in this area and I think anyone else, if you've been watching the videos or the stream, would also be feeling the same way. So I decided that once this park was done, I would move on to a new area and the other parts of this plaza or park, well I guess the other ones might be an actual plaza, those I would tackle later. Now, to continue with this park, um, I was working on, I, again, that same pavement path. I was making this circle here because I knew I wanted to put a pattern or something that was, in, that was a decal. And 
I needed a surface to put that decal on. However, I didn't realize that whatever surface, I guess it has to be an actual surface, like a popple surface. I didn't realize that this thing itself takes decals just fine. So that path was actually completely unnecessary, even though I spent so long trying to get this really, really tiny circle made out of it. Uh, I noticed a little bit later, but for now, I think it was right here. No, not here. But here I'm putting some kind of, I, might, I think it's actually a brick wall, a short brick wall or something. And I, just, I made that into the border for this circle here. And I found in the procedural objects textures, the preloaded textures, that there's this, uh, this gravel kind of pattern, which was awesome. You see, I already deleted the path here because I realized this worked. So this gravel is awesome. I think I'm it's called gravel, but it actually looks like, I wouldn't call it gravel. It's these tiny pebbles. It's these, okay, I know gravel means tiny pebbles, but it's, I feel like it goes by another name. Decorative gravel or decorative stones, decorative pebbles, garden pebbles. I don't know. I, uh, gravel is just not what I would call it. Uh, gravel to me sounds more industrial, I guess. I, I think of this like broken, sharp white stone and stuff. I mean, pebbles, well, the, pebbles also sounds nice, doesn't it? I hear pebbles, I think of round things. Anyway, that, um, so this wall that I just put down there, again, that took a crazy long time. You could see what my struggle there was because it was going to be an irregular shape. And it was kind of, it's kind of like a curved version or a curved... I don't know, mimicry of the overall shape of this surface. So that took a crazy long time. Um, but I finally got it looking good, and this is exactly what I wanted. Have that tree in gravel on the planter, surrounded by benches. It was done. But is the park done? No siree, there's still more to do. The I put a random building down there, and that's really not, that's really not much more to say about that. It's just random. But... The edge of that surface looked ugly. It's just cut. It, it's just a random model of nothingness. So it needed some sort of edge to look better. I'm using, I'm pretty sure it's a curved network, judging from, I mean, just what we're seeing right here. Yeah, it's stretching out and stuff. So again, I counted the nodes that I needed, all the corners I needed, drew it on the side, and then dragged them all back in. So pretty easy to do, other than, you know, the tedious alignments like what I'm doing here with this adjustment so cut that out and we can move on I I did decide to keep this in here though just to show you just how much how finicky those things can be now here's the stage I built a while back out of a planter and put it in what I thought was a more reasonable position uh, a place completely on the end of the park so that we can have a bunch of chairs in front of it for whatever events we have here so again, to make this stuff easier, I did it all on the ground first, and then I can move them into place and just move um, use move it to elevate it the correct way. And there we go. We have our little city CD seat city seating area for any events here. And I was really feeling good now because basically this area was really starting to get filled up and looking nice. I just had to cover up. Uh, I wouldn't say cover up, I guess. Well, filling filling the gaps with more tables and places to eat and sit. And including the top where I decided that we should have the benches on the outside, the outer sort of path as well. And I had said that the railings are purely decorative, which they are. And I was only going to put them here, as you see, surrounding the gap, the hole in this this second level. But as I started placing those benches around the path, I decided that, you know, it looks better if you have the railing as kind of like a, a headboard, like a bed headboard, just like a rear surface to those benches. But again, I think it should be obvious that's not for safety because the outside, the actual outer circumference of the path does not have the railings. Now we needed to just add some flowers here as well at the very entrance because it is the entrance, it is the main gate walkway into the second level and it just was looking too bland if I just had the concrete there so I copied over some of those flowers from the planters in the center copied over the planters as well and made them nice and thick so we don't have any concerns about the about how it lays down on the curve there and then just finished the work with these benches benches everywhere benches everywhere 
deciding to spread them around in pairs all around like this so you have a nice even distribution of, of benches and in my mind that was pretty much it and now it was just really the final touches final little corrections and just any random little extra ideas I had now most importantly though was this where I was still using that purple I think it's a vanilla acid and if it's not then maybe it's just a pretty old one it just doesn't look very good and it was creating this asymmetric um, asymmetric distribution of trees anyway so I made sure that the very green ones are at the corners and the purpley ones are a little more inside and maybe even under the surface as I started looking at again having a final look at everything I realized that you know this horse statue here wasn't really wasn't actually visible from below so when you drive toward the park from the vehicle elevators you don't really see anything and I really didn't like that <clears throat> this statue especially because it's looking out outwards from the park should be visible to those coming toward the park it really should be as much for outsiders or people coming people just outside the park as it is for people who are in the park seeing this stuff so I brought in these planners again these are actually pretty useful aren't they uh, but something to give this thing a base that it would be it would be um, mounted on now it seems like I needed to use two probably because the texture was being stretched too much and so it would look ugly and I'm not really sure here why I didn't just have it on top directly and I chose to overlap a little bit uh, but I did and it did give me this dark band that you're seeing there it took a long time to align um, but I, I liked how, how it looked in the end and there you have it now you can actually see the statue as you're coming up to the park instead of this bland concrete wall very nice very nice indeed and then the lighting wasn't completely done yet so I had to make sure that that was properly done now at every corner that I deemed reasonable but also just to illuminate some of the key points in our park right so we just built up this statue I looked for something like a, let's see what can I I can't even read what it says there spotlight that makes sense so I found these yellow spotlights that were great um, draw attention to the statue and really illuminate it uh, at night I mean you can see that the the lights I put nearby are already bright enough but these lights are yellow so it really gives uh, special attention to the statue and I wanted the same thing for the other well not statue it will be a sculpture here but I wanted something bigger to really bring attention to the area you know you know those uh, big lights that uh, announce like the grand opening of a big store or whatever that's exactly what I wanted I found it right here under search lights and that was absolutely perfect and you'll get a better look at that later when I show some final shots now sadly I realized there was one thing that I'd forgotten and it was this part right here the transition between the normal pathway and my red brick procedural object pathway I still had these gaps and stuff to fill up but although it would sound easy it took a long time but basically, I just had to fill up these gaps with uh, pieces of concrete or curb or whatever it was that I found. The biggest deal, though, is that as you just saw right there, I was working through tree branches, and that was not fun. Especially when you're trying to line things up perfectly, that quite that didn't quite work. Um, but then I was actually done, guys. I think I've said done a few times now, but really, I mean done. We are at the end of this video and at the end of the work of this park we are finished absolutely complete with this enjoy this beautiful shot of it at night in all its glory with normal lights and search lights and everything on top so for the first time we will end this video with not really cinematics but a video watching a garbage truck so we can see what it's like to climb that vehicle elevator and pass this park not that we'll actually get a look at the park though, so don't worry. Once we finish following this garbage truck, we'll be ending with some screenshots of the final thing. So, enjoy the final shots, and I hope to see you next time or on the stream. This has been Spectre 18. You're watching the city of New Wailai, and wherever you may be, good morning, good afternoon, and good night.